logarithmic differentiation. <clears throat> We've talked about a couple of techniques of differentiation one of which is implicit differentiation, and this is the other one that we've mentioned, and so I want to get into how do you do logarithmic differentiation. So the idea is, with logarithmic differentiation, you can simplify your function before you take the derivative using the rules of logarithms, and then make your derivative easier, or in some cases, you can simplify the function where if you don't do that, if you don't put logs in, and use this technique, it actually is not differentiable. So sometimes you have to use logarithmic differentiation. Sometimes it's just advantageous to make your derivative easier. But it, it's based on the rules for logarithms. So I'm going to give you the steps, and then we're going to do some examples to sort of show you how it works. So to do logarithmic differentiation, you first of all take the natural log of both sides. You just put ln of y equals ln of whatever's on the other side. <clears throat> And then you simplify as much as you can using the rules for logarithms. Once you've done that, you then differentiate implicitly. And you have to replace y if it's in there. So you want the answer only in terms of x. So when you do implicit differentiation, you're going to have a y show up. And we're going to have to replace y with our original function. And then we solve for y prime. All right, so those are the three steps. It seems relatively straightforward. It's not sometimes, but if we understand the rules for logarithms, it's going to be a little bit easier. So <clears throat> let's just remind ourselves of the rules for logarithms because we're saying to use the rules for log. So use some cursive writing here just to. Throw you off. See if I can write it. There we go. <laughs> this pen doesn't work as well for that. But the first rule for logarithm says that if you have log base C of A times B, it's log base C of A plus log base C of B. And then the second rule says that you have, if you have A divided by B, then you're allowed to write that as log base C of A minus log base C of B. And the third rule is log base C of A to the B is equal to B log base C of A. So those are your three rules for logarithms, and that's what we're going to use in order to simplify our function before we take the derivative. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here's an example. Fairly large function. We've got e to the x, we've got a square root of x squared plus 1. And it's divided by x squared plus 2 cubed. Now, you can take the derivative of this using the quotient rule and the chain rule and all that. You can do it, but it will be complicated. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go ln y equals ln of this whole thing. So the first step just says take the ln of both sides and then you're allowed to split it using the rules for logarithms. So we're allowed to basically get rid of the quotient first of all by saying ln y is equal to ln of e to the x square root of x squared plus 1 minus ln of x squared plus 2 cubed. Then we're allowed to rules, use the rules for logs again or continuing to use the rules for logs to split this product. So it becomes ln of e to the x plus ln of the square root of x squared plus 1, because that's a product. It's a times b, so now it's a plus b, and then it's minus, and I'm going to bring this 3 down in front. So it's 3 ln of x squared plus 2. And then finally, I'm going to bring this x down in front and get x ln e, and then remember ln of e is 1, so that's just going to become x, and then this square root is actually a power of 1 half, so I'm going to have half of ln of x squared plus 1 minus 3 ln of x squared plus 2. Okay, so at this point, we've used the rules for logarithms as much as we can, aside from maybe getting rid of this now since we know it's 1, and then the second step comes into play. So the second step says actually take the derivative now implicitly. So the derivative of ln y, the derivative of ln is 1 over y, 
and then it's multiplied by y prime. So that's the derivative of ln y. The derivative of x is 1. This 1 half is going to stay here, and then the derivative of ln of x squared plus 1 is 1 over x squared plus 1. That's the derivative of the ln multiplied by the derivative of x squared plus 1, which is 2x. Then it's minus 3. The derivative of ln, again, is 1 over the function, so 1 over x squared plus 2, and then multiplied by 2x. So that's the derivative. Then we solve for y prime. So we say y prime is equal to y on 2, and then 1 plus this 2 is going to cancel with that 2. So x over x squared plus 1, and then minus this 2 times 3 is 6x over x squared plus 2. And our final step is to then write y back in. So y was e to the x square root of x squared plus 1 divided by x squared plus 2 cubed. That's what y was equal to if you look way back up at the beginning. right? So we're just replacing y with that. And then that is multiplied by this. Okay, so is it more work sometimes? But the idea is that this derivative, the actual step where we took the derivative right here to right here is much simpler than if we took the derivative of that. Okay, because the derivative of that by itself would be rather large and we don't have time to go through it all, but I think you can appreciate that it would be. Here's another one. Okay, so again, we could take the derivative of this without logarithmic differentiation, but we are going to make it easier by using logarithmic differentiation. So the first thing that that's going to enable us to do is get rid of the cube root, because the cube root is a power, right? It's the power of one third. So the first thing I can do is write this as one third ln of x cosine x over x squared minus one. Then that is going to allow me still to simplify because it's a quotient. So I'm going to go one third and then it's going to become ln of x cosine x minus ln of x squared minus one. And then further, I can split that product. So this is a product, so I can split it as ln x plus ln of cosine x minus ln of x squared minus one. And if you're able to see it, you can jump from this step to this step. You don't have to put that extra step in there. If you know, okay, that's multiplication, so it's plus, and that's division, so it's minus, you can jump down to that step. But now we can take the derivative. So the derivative of ln y is 1 over y, y prime. The derivative of this, the 1 third, is just going to stay there. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. The derivative of ln of cosine x is going to be 1 over cosine x multiplied by the derivative of cosine x, which is minus sine x. And then the derivative of this is 1 over x squared minus 1 times 2x. And then we simply bring the y over. So y prime becomes y over 3. And then it's on to 1 over x. I'm going to simplify this. This is sine over cosine. So it's tangent x. And then minus 2x over x squared minus 1. And then finally what we do is we replace the y. So the y becomes the cube root of x cosine x over x squared minus 1, because that's what the original function was, multiplied by 1 over x minus tan x minus 2x over x squared minus 1. And that's our answer. That's our derivative. Okay? So that over 3, that's where that 1 third came from. And then y, if you go back up here, was the cube root of x cosine x over x squared minus 1. So that's why I wrote it here. And then we just multiply it by that. So those are two examples of questions where you have to decide, am I going to use logarithmic differentiation or am I going to take the derivative without it? And you could take the derivative without it, but there are questions where you can't. And this is an example of one. So you, if you have a variable in the base and a variable in the exponent or in the power, you have to use logarithmic differentiation. That's how you know. And why we have to do that is because we don't have, we have a power rule, but the power rule requires this to be a constant. And we have an exponential rule, but it requires the base to be a constant. So when it's not, when they're both variables, we have to do this. And what that allows us to do is bring the power down. That's the rule for logarithms 
that we talked about. And then we can take the derivative of this. This becomes a product rule, right? It's sine x times ln x. So 1 over y, y prime, that's the derivative of ln y. This is going to be sine x times the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, plus ln x times the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. And then we're going to go y prime is equal to y multiplied by, can't do anything to simplify this, but we can write it like that, and then ln x cosine x. You don't need the brackets there. So then we replace y at the end. So y prime becomes x to the sine x. And then it's multiplied by what was in the brackets, sine x over x plus ln x cosine x. And that, again, is a situation where you have to use logarithm differentiation. You don't have a choice. The first two, you have a choice. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there because we're going to run out of time if I try to do another question. I don't want to get interrupted by it. Uh, but that's the concept of logarithmic differentiation. We're going to practice a lot more. But that gives you an example of both situations. A situation where the function is just very complicated and you want to simplify it. And a situation where you have to use logarithmic differentiation.